So one of the things that I found that I really enjoy, and I think a lot of other people do, are the walk around videos that I keep seeing. Virgil's done a few of these on his Bearhawk 5, and I keep seeing them on the completed aircraft, but I've not seen one yet on a kit. And as you all know now, I have a Bearhawk companion that I just received in the last month or two from the Bearhawk factory out there in Fairview, Oklahoma, and I'm really excited about building this, but I wanted to do kind of a walk around of the kit that I received. There was very little on how the kit was gonna show up or information kind of about about, you know where stuff is and I just kind of wanted to share the way that I found mine this may be different um, from the way they do it in the future but this is going to be kind of a walk around of the kit sharing some of the components that I showed last time when I received it as well as just me telling where stuff is how you get this kit how hardware arrives things like that so I hope you enjoy it a little bit of a shorter video here but this is going to be a walk around of my Bearhawk companion aircraft quick build kit as you saw in my last video, I had my kit delivered rather than picking it up from Fairview. This cost about $2 per mile as of the recording of this video, but the insurance and peace of mind in the delivery was worth it in my opinion. The companion is really easy to move with a couple of people if you have at least six heavy duty dollies under the corners and the middle of the shipping unit. You'll need either a small trailer or even possibly a small rental dumpster to unpack this thing. There is a ton of plastic wrap, cardboard, and packing foam that you'll want to dispose of before you're overwhelmed with the stuff. Just like Christmas, however, don't accidentally throw away anything important that will cause you to go digging back through that stuff later. In the center of the fuselage, you're gonna find your gear legs, a box of hardware and components, the firewall and other stuff. The windshield shipped on the other side and I've already moved it from this shot right here. You're also going to find a packet with your plans, the Bearhawk book, as well as some other information in various spots like the wing roots. These are your inventory list and you need to make sure everything that is on them has actually been delivered. I end up missing some nut plates, but I was able to reach out to Virgil and get those in the mail as you will see in a future video. List, and here she is. It's both exciting and terrifying that there's 34, and there's probably actually less than 34 drawings here unless they number these perfectly in sequential order. But there it is. That's what my girl's gonna look like one of these days. That's the Bearhawk. And this is why I bought this plane. I know I explained this in the video, but with 180 uh, or up to potentially 215 if I go with the experimental Titan um, or like homing engines, but at that weight, I have an empty weight of 1050-ish, probably closer to about 1100. And then 1100, 1100 weight useful load. This is why I own this aircraft now. Um, that's gonna be a workhorse. So with two people uh, and topped off fuel, I'll be able to take off out of this strip with like 300 pounds of baggage if I really needed to or wanted to. Again, Part of my reasoning for doing this aircraft and not the five is this aircraft meets over 90% of my base mission. And the flexibility of its speed, its fuel uh, burn, plus its utility in and out of my strip, it just made it the better option. There are several components inside of the fuselage that are going to be used much further down the road as well. So on top of unpacking this, make sure that you've got some organization as well. Uh, at minimum, you need a good heavy duty shelf to put parts and control surfaces on. And you also need a good inventorying shelf like you can see in the background here that you can put hardware into or components that you're not gonna need for months or years down the road. Anything that looks like it's important is probably important. So anything like this that I found, a data tag here with the number 20 on it, which I assume means that that was the 20th Bearhawk that they have uh, made as a kit for the companion, I stowed away somewhere in case I need that for my DAR inspection at the end of all of this. 
The fuselage has a stinger tail mount skid attached to it. You'll have to unscrew that and take the bolts out. And then the front of it has the same thing to where you'll have to remove those bolts to get the fuselage off its frame. Once you do that, get a partner and it's probably less than 200 pounds material, but you definitely don't want to do that by yourself. The blue packaging you can see on the other side of the wing crates are the stringers and the tubing for the kit, some of which will be for the brakes and some for the fuel system. So the next day we went down to the hangar again and I started tackling both inventorying stuff as well as just continuing to unpack the wings. The wings come shipped inside of a metalized crate that is made out of steel. It's very, very heavy duty and you're going to want to save or hold on to these and cut them up for potential rotisseries. There is a nice JEGS rotisserie out there that you can get and then these attachment points for the wing. You can just build up a adapter and hook it into that JEGS rotisserie. But my plan is for when I get to the painting stage to just have these wings crates cut apart and reuse those as my rotisserie for turning the wing while we're painting it. At this point, I'm actually using the first couple of pages of the wing build manual, which is at the time of this recording, the only build manual that they have for the Bearhawks yet. All of the aircraft have their wing build manuals though, loaded up on the bearhawkaircraft.com website. And I highly recommend if you're considering these aircraft, you go take a look at those and see just what resources are available. All right, I have a old wing cradle that a buddy of mine, actually a coworker of mine, gave me. And it is currently set up for a RV-8. Um, he had a flat piece across the top right here, and I am taking that apart. I've got to make this thing a little wider. I think it's long enough, um, but then I've got to modify it to where it's got a rug slug um, on each side. Uh, so that way the wing can set in there. And that's the plan for today is I am just going to modify that wing cradle to take my bear hawk wings. There's a good chance somebody somewhere has got a kit done and they have a ton of parts that they have either manufactured or tools that they're looking to part on. So um, just like I got this from him for free, basically I don't have to buy casters um, or material to get started. All I'm using here is the EAA's cradle that is available online. These are the instructions that I found. I'm not gonna do a video on this, but there are some out there. And this is where my wings will stay for the duration of my build. All right, so I have got the frame taken apart. Basically, it was too narrow and too short for the Bearhawks wings. So the frame's apart now. I'm about to take these casters off so I can put them on the frame itself and uh, then put the carpet slugs on and we'll be good to go. While it's not going to win any beauty contest, this is going to be a very functional wing cradle that allows me to move my wings around by myself, but you will need somebody to load them on to the cradle. Wherever the fuel tank is, is the heavier end of these wings. So in this scenario, I've accidentally let my wife carry the load of these wings on her end, and I did not realize till I start doing the next wing that they are significantly different weights depending on which end you are grabbing. This is where a lot of the packing foam will come in. This is where a trailer or a dump trailer would be very nice to have, and I was very fortunate to be able to use ours to load all this stuff up and then take to the dump tomorrow. There is quite a bit of hardware that you will need to remove to separate the bottom half of what is kind of like a metal clamshell that holds these wings apart. I would just go ahead and separate the bottom wings top portion of the clamshell where you've got the bottom of the top wing and the top of the bottom wing connected still. You're going to waste your time if you just try to separate them both. But it just depends on how much space you have. If you don't have as much as I do, then you're going to be struggling uh, at this point to keep everything contained. Fortunately, I did have some cheap labor that could assist me in cleaning up the hangar and help me get stuff unpacked. Ha <laughs> ha
Once you've got the top of the bottom wing removed, you can remove the packing paper from that. And the aileron surfaces, you can't really see it right here. They ship kind of wedged down in there as well. I've gone ahead and removed the struts and the ailerons. Some of that will be actually inside of the wing and you will have to pull it out of those holes there. But then it's time to just do the exact same thing again. Some of these bolts can be very difficult and you just wanna be careful that you don't damage the actual structure itself if you have to peck or remove those out. Flip your wing cradle around and now you can see that I am dealing with the heavier end of this wing and realize that my wife was able to handle a lot heavier load than I initially thought it was gonna be. I still think these wings each probably weigh less than 250 pounds, but you will need one other person to move these. Do not risk this. That steel would puncture straight through that aluminum if you accidentally drop that wing on those steel posts that are the crate that it ships in. So just take your time and be safe doing this if you're unpacking one of these. From there, I just moved the crates over and put them behind the 140. I'll eventually cut these up and like I said, just save them for stock metal that I can use for the rotisserie when the time comes, but that's a project for another day. Okay, so tonight the kids and wife are coming down and we are going to get started inventorying my companion kit. All of the hardware was drop shipped from Aircraft Spruce which is awesome. It's all in these boxes that I've got spread across the hangar right now. I know you can't see in the back. So this is basically like a very complicated jigsaw puzzle from this point on, except all the pieces are labeled and you just got to keep up with them. I am excited that Aircraft Spruce is the vendor that they have currently chosen to deliver this hardware just because it is very well organized and in individual packets of certain quantities at time, but recognize that there are some things that are going to ship directly from Bear Hawk, like the nut plates that I've already referenced. Those items will come in the fuselage. All of this stuff will ship from Aircraft Spruce and show up on your doorstep. I had received several packages before this week, but I just saved them until now to organize everything. But even now at the recording of this video, which is several months after I shot this, I have stuff on back order with Spruce. So make sure you keep an eye on what you've got, what you haven't yet, and where you're setting on your back order log. 20-2983. Right. At this point, we're basically done unpacking the Bearhawk itself and we're getting into the inventory inside of things. And I cannot stress how much effort needs to be put into correctly inventorying and labeling where stuff is. You will receive a hardware call out from Bearhawk. They're actually on the website. You can go access them even before you get your kit. And I assorted everything in boxes by its system. So the fuel system has its own box. The control surfaces have their own box. The ailerons are with the, the flaps and the elevator. And then I've got the hydraulic system for the brakes. All that stuff is in its own box. So that way when I need that, I know roughly where to go and get started. Now there is an assorted or an, a, a assortment of hardware in the box that had a letter A on it. That's things like cables and rivets and things that I will further organize. I wanted to just start by sort of mass organizing and then drill down into the specifics of each item that I was looking at by the system that it was focused on. This is going to help me save time down the road by knowing where everything is even if it's been six or seven months since I've last touched it. Although it may not seem like it, this could be one of the most important things you do to get a successful build going is to take that extra little time right here at the front and make sure you're aware of where everything is located in your kit. There's no set way to start one of these kits. You know, some people start with a fuselage, getting started by, you know, packing the struts and putting the, the gear under the aircraft and then it actually starts looking like an airplane. So I've elected to go ahead and start with the wings instead of that fuselage. 
And in the next video, I will share that starting process as well as sort of why I went with that. And um, we'll actually start looking at doing some work on building this aircraft. Hope you've enjoyed this. Hope you've enjoyed a, a kind of a walk around of what one of these kits look like when they arrive. And I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day.